All right, so Intel had a foundry day, and this was a big one, Pat. You and I had a lot of preamble on this one, a lot of run up, a lot of there was a lot of excitement. Uh, Pat Gelsinger did his victory lap on five and four. Uh, had the chance to bring Gina Raimondo on stage to talk about the U.S. scene. I think she called Intel a national treasure or something of that sort, and basically talked about you know talk about a vote of confidence from the administration that they're going to continue to support the company. But he also got huge. Um, some huge backing from Satya Nadella, which announced that it would be partnering with Intel. It was able to declare, which Pat, to some dissatisfaction, I think about the $15 billion um, lifetime value of its pipeline, a big number, but again, remember Nvidia grew 276 billion in a day in market cap. So, you know, I think everyone was kind of puzzled about that one, um, but Satya's support and Microsoft buying in was important, but he had the cast of everybody there. You know, they had, Synopsis there, they had Cadence there, they had Broadcom there, they had Microsoft there. I mean, there was a huge support structure arm, right? Uh, Renee Haas was there. Then you had uh, Sam Altman there. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be in the room, so I did not get to hear what was said there, and I was devastated about it. But, uh, Pat, I mean, this was a big moment for Intel in terms of a coming out around its boundary. Now, when I made a bull case about a week and a half ago, I wrote a bull case on market watch. And one of my three items, the biggest ones is boundary. Yes, the company has improved its process. It does commit itself to technology leadership over the next couple of years. That is a big challenge. Having said that, the desire to have a US-based or West-based foundry doing the leading edge with differentiation and packaging, which Intel has proven already that it has, and the packaging being perhaps more important in the long term than wafer. I know, said it. I'll let you weigh in on that one, Pat. But um, in this overall AI boom, it seems like Intel is in a very interesting place that it could really see some acceleration of its foundry business. This has been the fastest growth part of its business. It's been a uh, a bit of a encouragement point. It's got good support from you know, the, the policymakers government around the world, the company's expanding in Europe, it's expanding in Israel, it's expanding here in the US. And this was a moment for the company to celebrate that. Having said that, they also did it during a different national holiday, you know, NVIDIA earnings day, joke, I can't help myself. But it was a, a big day, Pat, it went all day long. So I, I know you gotta run, I wanted to talk fast, hopefully give you at least 60 seconds to a minute, two minutes, whatever you need to, to weigh in on your side. And we can come back to this later talk more about it does it make sense yeah we had a um intel foundry i, I guess he's the ceo now uh Stu Pan yeah. uh, on on the yeah. six five and what's interesting is you go back and read that interview uh, and you read between the tea leaves um there was a lot of confidence and a hey you really should join us for uh direct connect day and they they delivered i didn't expect a major customer announcement like like Microsoft, and yeah, I got cut up. I, I got cut up in in the you know it was a fifteen billion dollar contract, uh, but it ended up that that's fifteen billion dollars so far overall lifetime value for uh, the entire IFS business, which by the way is up fifty percent from uh, uh, Intel earnings day. So I think that was a pretty uh, a pretty pretty big a, a pretty big deal. Listen, three years ago. I caught up with Pat Gelsinger right as he made a re-entry back into Intel, and I wrote a piece that essentially said, if they execute uh, on this, this, and the other, they will be back. I can't tell you the, the attacks that I got uh, on that, but, but here's the deal. I was Intel's biggest customer. I was at Compaq. I was Intel's biggest competitor uh, when I was at, at, at AMD. And I know this company very well and, and what they are, are capable of. I didn't babe Ruth it. I didn't say they would. I said, this is what they would have to do, that they do it. And, and then that turned into you know five nodes in four years. And everybody said, there is no way. And by the way, I totally get it after Intel stumbling on, uh, on seven nanometer. I mean, it, it, it's like, why would you ever think that this would, uh, this would be possible? So... Uh, really good progress uh, so far, right? That number needs to go from 15 to 50 uh, in short order. But if I look at, I do believe that they will do NVIDIA packaging um, because, you know, and not just because, oh, TSMC can't do enough co-ops. It's because Intel's packaging is really good. 
uh, with uh, things like uh, Foveros and EMIB, and you'll see a lot of com- uh, you see a lot of designs that 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 will use both. Um, and you have MediaTek, who, by the way, is is taking low end market share away from from Qualcomm, which is 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 interesting. So. I do think uh, once Intel shows up with the goods, maybe it's after 18A, I do think Qualcomm will do something with Intel. And what a lot of people don't understand from Qualcomm is they have the most diversified manufacturing of any SOC uh, provider out there. You know, I mean, they do GF, they do Tower, they do TSMC, they do Samsung. I mean, they're, they're all over in, uh, in, in the support uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that they do. And I got to tell you, I, I'm going to Babe Ruth, uh, Intel foundry, uh, and say that it will be a very successful ongoing concern that ultimately could be split as a tracking stock, um, uh, out there. Now people are talking about splitting the company up into two. That would be, that would be stupid. Uh, because uh, until you have full des- design autonomy and and using all industry standard tools, which Intel doesn't currently do, it's about a seven year process to do that. I know that because I saw AMD go through it when we were going from proprietary uh, tools to uh, cadence and uh, and synopsis. Yeah, and I'll I'll pull that together here really quick and we'll, we'll close this baby down. But yeah, Pat, it, it it also would be just stupid from their business model standpoint. You could see the outsider view on why they would maybe want that to happen. And of course, could it drive more dollars and support across established companies if there was seen it? But, you know, that's like, that's like soft bank and arm, you know, you own 90% of it. It's like, is it really public? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know, it's kind of. 